My boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Robert's Sports Show. I'm your host, Robert. Alright, as we are counting down to the days until WrestleMania 37, day one, day two, which I love the two-day shows. It makes those shows not as long. Um, we're going to do the best of like we've done every other WWE pay-per-view of 2021. I'm also do a couple other ones. Um, if you check out Robert's Sports Show, you probably see the ranking of the Undertaker matches. I love doing stuff about the Undertaker. Um, this one here is going to be a WrestleMania main event ranking. So I went through and ranked all 37 main events. Now, 36 shows, day one, day two for WrestleMania 36, two separate main events. Um, so let's take a look at how those main events have stacked up over the years. Now, some of you may agree, some of you may disagree with the first one here. To me, the worst main event in WrestleMania history. WrestleMania number one. We had a tag team match of Hulk Hogan and Mr. T versus Paul Wendorf and Rowdy Roddy Piper. If you've seen WrestleMania one, you understand why this is here. <laughs> it wasn't good. Um, as one and a half star, um, Hulk Hogan and Mr. T got the victory. Now. Again, this next one, maybe some people agree or disagree, but the next worst WrestleMania main event was last year. WrestleMania 36, night two. Oh, night one was good. Night two, we had a WWE title line. We had Drew McIntyre versus champion Brock Lesnar. I thought it was pure trash myself. Um, Brock Lesnar says does not need to be in the WWE ring anymore. Drew McIntyre... It's sad that he lost out on his WrestleMania moment. Hopefully he'll get that this year in front of fans, but that's the second worst main event in history. Drew McIntyre winning. I gave him one and a half star. And then we go to 35, 35th on the list, WrestleMania 2. WWF title on the line, steel cage match. Hulk Hogan, champion versus King Kong Bundy. Um, that's, you know, if you remember WrestleMania 2, there was four shows in Boston, New York, Madison Square Garden, four in Detroit, and four in L.A. or something like that. Um, yeah, this was a steel cage match. It was just wasn't that good. Hogan got the victory, one and three-quarter star. Next up, we have WrestleMania three main event. They do have title champion Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant. I know this is a famous match. I know this is where Andre passed the torch to Hogan. And when Hogan body slammed Andre, that was the, you know, going from the Andre the Giant era to the Hogan era and all, everything that came about. They had a rematch at WrestleMania 4. Um, it was a main event. Um, it was part of the tournament. So it's like, okay, at the moment, at WrestleMania 3, yes, that was a big moment. That moment got deteriorated as time went on, I think. Um, Hogan got the victory, one and three-quarter star. Next up, we have WrestleMania 11. We have Lawrence Taylor versus Bam Bam Bigelow. Yeah, um, Lawrence Taylor can wrestle a little bit, but again, it's Lawrence freaking Taylor. Um, now, what was the title match from uh, WrestleMania 11? Do I have that on here? Is that part of any of the best of that I've done without me pulling up Google stuff? I guess the WrestleMania 11 title match wasn't anything in particular. What was WrestleMania? Yeah, I don't even remember what WrestleMania's title match was. Because it wasn't one of the greatest. Hmm. Yeah, so, but for the, regardless, I think it was Hogan and so, or Bret Hart and somebody, if I remember right. Bret Hart and Yokozuna, possibly. One of their rematches. But still, regardless, Lawrence Taylor shouldn't have won main event. I mean, uh, that'd be like like Bad Bunny being main event of Mania. Um, so yeah, Lawrence Taylor got the victory there. I give it one and three quarters. Uh, next up, number thirty-two on the list, WrestleMania eight, Hulk Hogan versus Psycho Sid. Um, again, this singles match because it's Hogan going over the title match. Disagree with that. Hogan winning, I give it two and a quarter. And yes, I've gone back and watched every single WrestleMania. 
Um, number 31 on the list comes from WrestleMania 13. They're doing a title, The Undertaker versus Champion Psycho Sid. Um, Taker getting the victory there in two and a quarter star. This might surprise some people as well. Um, I was there live. I actually left during it. Um, number 30 on the list. WrestleMania 34, the Universal title, Champion Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. At 31, Lesnar and Reigns and then it was a good match until Seth cashed in and they become great. Just here at 34, this was more of a Lesnar just pulverizing Reigns. Like I said, we left in the middle of it. We got back to the hotel and, and watched the last half of it. Um, at that time, we were all, all in about Heyman turning on Lesnar and going with Roman Reigns. It took three years for this to happen, but it's been gold since it's happened. Um, but yeah, Brock Lesnar beating Roman Reigns there in a two and a quarter star match. Number 29 on the list comes from WrestleMania 7. WWE Heavyweight Title on the line. Champion Sergeant Slaughter versus Hulk Hogan. Hogan getting the victory in two and a quarter star match. Number nine, number 28 on the list comes from WrestleMania 9. WWF title, Yokozuna versus Bret the Hitman Hart. Bret was champion at WrestleMania 9. Lost the title to Yokozuna in a two and a half star match. Now, follow that up with the next on the list, WrestleMania 10, which was champion Yokozuna, who lost the title to Bret the Hitman Hart. Special note, at WrestleMania 9, there was a match after that that was more of like a Money in the Bank type cash-in. Hogan was a uh, number one contender. Hogan came out and challenged, or Yokozuna had an open challenge or something. Challenged to whomever Hogan came out and won the title. The actual main event was a show was this. That was more like a Money in the Bank type cash-in. If you, if you guys want to count that as the main event, then it was the worst main event in history. It was like 22 seconds long. Um, it, for, yeah, so WrestleMania 10, which is 27th on the list, Brett won. Two, and both of those matches were about two and a half. Then number 26 on the list comes from WrestleMania 27, the WWE title, no disqualification. Champion The Miz versus John Cena. Having The Miz go over on John Cena at that time was big for the Miz. It pushed the Miz up, but the Miz wasn't able to keep that momentum to fell back down. When you wouldn't let Rusev get over on John Cena later on, it would have built Rusev up. Um, that match was two and three quarter star. Number 25 on the list comes from tape, from WrestleMania 33, no hold barred, Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker. Just like I said in the best of The Undertaker show, if you've watched the Undertaker documentary, you understand where he was at physically in this match and how he was so disappointed in himself of the way this match went off when he didn't give Roman Reigns the Undertaker, you know? And it kind of it was kind of sad to actually watch. It was very intriguing. If you've never watched it, it's called uh, what, Undertaker Last Call. It's on Peacock. Go watch it. It is a great documentary to watch. I'm not big on those kind of shows. Um, J-Man turned me on to them. Um, and just, yeah, it was amazing. I, I'm actually going to get some time to go watch some other stuff there. Um, but Roman Reigns getting the victory there. Taker leaving his stuff in the ring. Wasn't his last match. We've learned that. Um, I give it two and three quarter star. Um, then the next two on the list, both are two and three quarter star. WrestleMania 5 and WrestleMania 4. Um, we're going to do these in reverse order. WrestleMania 4 was Randy Savage versus Ted DiBiase Sr., this was the tournament shows like 16 matches on that WrestleMania. They were a tournament to, to uh, for the WWF World Heavyweight title at the time. Um, Hogan has, had lost to Andre in February because DiBiase had, and DiBiase bought the title from Andre or something. And DiBiase got involved in the Andre Hogan match. So they stripped uh, Andre of the title, had a tournament at Mania. Randy Savage won. Savage held the title for 360 some days, over one year, it's like 370 days, something like that. It was like a year and a week or two. To WrestleMania 5, where he actually lost the title to Hulk Hogan. Um, so yeah, having Savage hold that title for us over a year from Mania to Mania, which I thought was great. They need to do that now more often. 
Um, but both of those matches were two and three quarters, both title changes. Hogan at WrestleMania 5, which is 24th on the list. And then Savage won the title at WrestleMania, 20, at WrestleMania 4, which is 23 on the list. That brings us to 22 on the list, which is WrestleMania number 25. Again, I was there live. I was at 25, 30, and 34. Champion Triple H versus Randy Orton. Um, actually, a really, really good main event. Three star. Uh, Triple H getting the victory. I remember trying to take some pictures. And coming I mean, out, obviously, my first WrestleMania. I was really big on that. Trip, we're basically side stage. And so we get really good pictures of the stage, but not as, not as good as the ring. Trip comes up, is posing there with the belt. I'm trying to get some pictures. And this fucking two year old. It wasn't a two year old, it was a funny thing. He's like a 30 year old guy in front of us. And it's fucking kind of about holding it up and showing Triple H. It's like, Trip, I'm a fucking champion too. And I didn't take it like two pictures since I said, fuck it. I said, fuck it. You know? And that was, that was fucking the whole way home. 15 and a half hour car ride, me and J Man. I took two pictures and said, fuck it. It's like, holy hell, we just had so much time, so much fun on that trip. Um, but Triple H getting the victory there. Number 21 on the list, WrestleMania 24. Batista versus Triple H. Um, Evolution members facing each other just like a 25 in the Arabian trip. Um, but seeing a faction like Evolution, you had Ric Flair, Triple H, Randy Orton, Dave Batista, and they all became World Heavyweight Champions. And they uh, both had, over time, beat Triple H for the title. But here we had Dave winning the world title, Dave Batista. Um, Three-star match, that's, that's WrestleMania 24, number 21 on the list of the best main events in WrestleMania history. Number 20 comes from WrestleMania 16, WWF title on the line in a fatal four-way. Triple H champion versus McFoley versus Big Show versus The Rock. Um, Trip getting the victory, retaining his title in that fatal four-way, three and a quarter. Number 19, WrestleMania 32, WWE title, Roman Reigns, the going up against champion Triple H. Uh, Trip had won the title at the Royal Rumble, which is a one of two Royal Rumbles for the World Heavyweight title. And then him screwing Roman Reigns out of it, and then Roman Reigns getting his WrestleMania moment there by winning the title from Trip. Number 18 just happens to be from WrestleMania 18, WWF title, Triple H versus champion Chris Jericho Y2J. Um, Trip getting the victory there, I give it three and a quarter. Number 17 on the list from WrestleMania 14, the WF World Heavyweight title, champion the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, versus Stone Cold, Stone Cold, Stone Cold, Steve Austin, because Austin 316 says I just whooped your ass. Um, Stone Cold, it'd be kind of at the start of when that just shot the hell of the freaking moon. Him beating Shawn at Mania, Mr. WrestleMania, Shawn Michaels. Stone Cold winning three and a half star. Number 16 on the list comes from Twice in a Lifetime, WrestleMania 29. We had John Cena versus the champion The Rock. Uh, we all know that that year at The Rock at Royal Rumble, he beat CM Punk, who in CM Punk's four and 37 day title run. What was it, August or something before? I guess six months before Rumble. The Rock Challenge. Whoever is champion at the Rumble, I'm gonna face them. We we're all like, oh fuck here, Gus Ian Funkle's the title, which was great. I wanted to happen again, but um, John Cena winning twice in a lifetime there. Number 15 on the list, that was three and a half star, by the way. Number 15 on the list comes from last year, WrestleMania 36, night one, the Boneyard match. The phenomenal AJ Styles versus The Undertaker. Um, watching the Taker documentary and having Taker talk about this match and how it came about, after his match with uh, Roman Reigns, Taker was, he wanted that moment that where he, he could go into a match, walk away from that match and be like, you know, I'm good. That, that was it. That was the match that I want to end my career on. He had the tag match with against the Brothers of Destruction in Saudi or Australia or somewhere that was trash. He had the trash match against Goldberg. He had the two minute match against John Cena. He missed WrestleMania 35. Um, he just didn't have anything going on and just wasn't, you know, was there but wasn't on the card. 
he was looking for that match, talking to the boys, AJ and him, AJ Styles and Take and Mark Calloway and Michelle McCool, they have some mutual friends. And they've got to hang out with him and stuff and get to know him. And AJ's talking to their mutual friend and says, You think Taker would I want, you know, what do you think about me and Taker at Mania? And the friend was like, You call and talk to him. He's looking for that just that moment match. So AJ calls Taker up and says, Look, I wanna I wanna wrestle you at WrestleMania. He's like, Oh, I don't know, man. He goes, I don't know where I'm you know, I'm gonna do it. Let me think about it. He talks to Michelle McCool and they talked about this in the documentary. Michelle's like, you've said all along, he's as good as Shawn Michaels. You trust Shawn in the ring. You can trust AJ. You know how AJ is. We know AJ. We know his family. And he's like, you know what? All right. We're, we're going to do it. It was supposed to be just a normal match until COVID hit. Once COVID hit, they talked about how they wanted to do something something big, something big or something different. AJ came up with the Boneyard match. They go to the WWE officials, Vince. We're gonna do this. We wanna do a boneyard match. They were like, "What the fuck is a boneyard match?" I want to figure it out. And that's how the boneyard match came about. The end of WrestleMania 36, night one. And like Taker said, it was fitting to the character. If it, it was fitting to Mark Calloway, to Undertaker, to Kate, everything that's going on, it was kind of that farewell match. Taker hasn't been back. There's not been talk of Taker since that. That might be the match, Taker's last match versus AJ Styles after Taker, Taker retiring Shawn Michaels. Holy hell. I gave that match three and a half. I loved it. When I rank a match, when I star rate a match, I'm star rating based on that match. The story does help with that match. Match quality, three and a half. Next up, number 14 on the list comes from WrestleMania 15, the WWF title, champion Stone Cold versus The Rock. Um, classic 15, 17, 19 for these three, for these two. This was the first one. Stone Cold getting the victory there in three and a half star. Number 13 comes from WrestleMania 35, Brawl Women's Champion on the line, SmackDown Women's Champion on the line, triple threat match. Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey. Charlotte's SmackDown title, Ronda's Raw title. Becky Lynch wins both in the first ever women's main event at WrestleMania. Three and a half star, Becky getting the victory there. Number 12 on the list comes from the WWE title. We had champion John Cena versus Triple H at WrestleMania 22. Cena getting the victory, three and three quarter star match. Number 11 on the list, once in a lifetime. Net WrestleMania 28, The Rock versus John Cena. They should have left it here. Match was great. Rock won. Three and three quarter star. Number 10 on the list comes from WrestleMania 6. The WWF title versus the WWF IC title and our Continental Champion. Ultimate Warrior versus World Champion Hulk Hogan. Winner take all. As we know, Ultimate Warrior won that. He ended up forfeiting the IC title, which I think Rick Rude ended up with. Um, but Warrior and Hogan, three and three quarter star. Number nine on the list comes from WrestleMania 23, WWF title, champion John Cena versus the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. Again, Shawn Michaels is Mr. WrestleMania. John Cena getting the victory here, retaining his title for star match. All right, and number eight on the list comes from WrestleMania 24. We have The Undertaker versus the World Heavyweight Champion, the Rated R Superstar Edge. Um, just like I said in the Taker video, Mr. Undertaker should be Mr. WrestleMania. I know Sean is because some of the high-profile matches and more title matches. But Taker, I mean, 27 matches, 25 wins. He didn't win the world title here versus... The rated our superstar edge. Um, I give the match four and a quarter. Um, I think it's one of the better matches in WrestleMania history, not alone main events. So this match was WrestleMania 24. It is. Let's see where we at here. It was the seventh best world title match in WrestleMania history. 
So, and when I do the best matches in Mania, that will be on there. So, yeah, that match was great. That match is going to live the test of time. Number seven on the list comes from WrestleMania 19, champion Kurt Angle versus Brock Lesnar. Yeah, I have a Brock Lesnar match this high. Yes, I was crapping on Brock Lesnar earlier, but at WrestleMania 19, Brock Lesnar could wrestle. He went from a wrestler to an MMA fighter to an MMA fighter trying to wrestle. It didn't work well. Then, yeah, Moonsault Brock Lesnar. Almost broke his neck, but Moonsault Brock Lesnar. Yeah, versus Kurt Angle. Getting the victory there. Match was four and a quarter. That is a great match. Number six on the list comes from WrestleMania 12. Yes, the Iron Man match. The video of title on the line, 60 minute Iron Man match. Champion Brett the Hitman Hart. Best there was, best there is, best there will be versus the Heartbreak Kid. Shawn Michaels, Mr. WrestleMania, what could possibly be a problem there? It's your gas. If you watch it today, with today's mindset of professional wrestling, it's your gas. At the time, that's the greatest thing in the world. I ended up giving it four and a half because of what it was. Now, did I rate it a little higher because it was Shawn and Brett? Yeah, probably. Have people tried to redo that match? Because it was a 60 minute time limit draw. 0-0 zero, zero on the pinfall list. They had a sudden death, 3 minute sudden death. Sean got one pinfall for the victory. Yeah, they tried to redo You tried to do that match today, nobody's watching it because it was 0-0. Zero, zero. You know, there was a, at Game Changer Wrestling, um, Fight Forever, on January 30th, they had a 24 hour show. It's on Fight TV if you want to go watch that part of it. They had a Iron Man match uh, for the Synergy Pro Wrestling World Title, Jordan Oliver versus Tony Deppin. Um, at 60 minutes, it ended up in the time limit draw, and they didn't want to end it, end it like that. And then Jordan Oliver's like, "Why don't we go another 60 minutes?" So yes, there's an hour and our two hour match, 120 minutes, Iron Man match for the title. Jordan Oliver ended up winning. It's not a bad match if you take out all the bullshit. The actual match itself is great. It's probably tw should have been like 30 minutes long. I give it a four star anyway, but it's a two hour match. Um, so yeah, people will try to re up this match and not to the level of it by no means. Number five on the list comes from WrestleMania 31. We talked about this a little earlier. We have Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar champion. We had the cash in of Seth Rollins during the match, was heavily to the match, probably from. I would say it was about a three and a half, three and three quarter star match. With Seth cashing in and doing what Seth does, took it to four and a half, and Seth winning and leaving WrestleMania as the champion. Number four on the list comes from WrestleMania 30. I was there. We had Daniel Bryan versus Batista versus champion Roman Reigns. Um, da um, Daniel Bryan had to beat Triple H in the opening match of the show to go on to the main event. The winner of that match went on to the main event. That was like a 20 minute match. It was great. You know, Brian won it, gets to the main event, becomes WWE Champion after all those years on the Indies and struggling and getting there. He finally became WWE Champion. I got to see it live. I got to see Taker lose. I got to see Daniel Bryan. Brian freaking Danielson win a WWE World Title, which is amazing. Number three on the list of the best main events in WrestleMania history. Comes from WrestleMania 17, probably the most iconic show in, in WrestleMania history. WWF World Title, no disqualification. Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Champion The Rock. This was the height of the Attitude Era. This is the height of the feud between Austin and Rock. This was kind of the pinnacle of anything that was that era of wrestling. Stone Cold beating The Rock for the title. Four and a half star. Just kind of brought everything in that era. If you look back on... It's like a pyramid. WrestleMania 1 through 17, 17 is the very top, and then you come down. You'll never have the electricity that that match had in that arena, in the height of everything, but everything that was here, everything else is like right in here. Um, but yeah, Stone Cold getting the victory there. And then number two, I think is one of the best WrestleMania main events ever. WrestleMania 20 for the World Heavyweight Title, Triple Threat, Champion, Triple H versus the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels versus Chris Benoit. 
Um, the Crippler Crispin Wall in WCW being a cruiserweight, getting to WWE in late 99, becoming a world title main eventer, winning the world title here at WrestleMania. Then the moment after this at WrestleMania 20, you had Crispin Wall's world champion. You had Eddie Guerrero as WWE champion. Two just kind of cruiserweights. That's all they were really were in WCW. Now they've kind of grown and they're at the pinnacle of it. They're both at WrestleMania, both for world titles. They were friends. They had that embrace in the middle of the ring. That was a good moment for professional wrestling. I know later there were things that went on. We're not talking about that here. We're talking about the match itself. And then the best main event in WrestleMania history came from WrestleMania 36. Streak versus career. I still think 25 match was better. But for main events, this was the best main event in WrestleMania history. The Undertaker versus Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels' career on the line. The match was phenomenal. Four and three quarters. I gave it the same star rating that I did. 25. If I had to go back and re-rate a match, which I'm not going to. Um, that opens a Pandora's box I don't want to get in the middle of. 25 probably should have been 5 star. I didn't do 5 star matches until a few years ago. Everything was 4 and 3 is the most I would do. This match here was definitely a solid 4 and 3. 4 and 3 quarters. Um, some say it was better than 25. As Paul's, the, in the Pulse Dungeon during these shows, the Pulse family, we, we think 25 is better. Um, we were at 25. Maybe, that, maybe that's it, but I've rewatched 25. 25 is better. Um, that is going to wrap up the best main events in WrestleMania history. Stay tuned to the Robert Sports Show for the preview for WrestleMania. Check out the NXT best matches and the NXT stand and deliver preview. As always, thanks for watching the Robert Sports Show. Don't just have a great day. Have a spiffy day. Robert Sports Show, your YouTube leader in sports talent content.